So let me guess, you don't have endless piles of money to give to Adobe for access to Premiere and or After Effects when creating logo stings or overlays with Alpha Channel for OBS Studio. You're using DaVinci Resolve and the question of the day is, what codec that offers Alpha Channel is best for OBS Studio in relation to its impact on your computer's processor so that you don't get any drop frames when you're executing your live stream. This video is going to explore all the available codecs that support Alpha Channel, and we're going to test it to see its impact on my processor here at this office right now. And at the end of this video, you'll get crispy clean transparency, and you will know exactly what codec to select and what parameters to select for that codec so that you get very low impact on your computer and zero drop frames for your live stream. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live streaming. If you want to learn OBS Studio or any hardware or software that makes your live stream super fun and cool for your viewers, you have found the right channel. Subscribe and click the bell for new video notifications. Wow, finding a solution for this was really difficult. I was over at the OBS Studio forums asking around and looking around for any recommendations. I was over at the Black Magic forums looking for a solution. I finally created an in-depth question with all the links and all the stuff about getting any kind of input on the best codecs with Alpha Channel for OBS Studio. Nothing came back. I fell back onto YouTube and did a lot of searching. I couldn't find anything except for one video by Epos Vox, and he was talking about how AVI with Alpha Channel uncompressed is the best, and then the second best is ProRes. So after getting that kind of a hint, I dug into it with DaVinci Resolve and learned that DaVinci Resolve doesn't allow for an export of AVI with an alpha channel so that one was off the table and then because i have a pc adobe does not license prores as an export unless you buy the pro version and go to another website to download the free plugin so i'm not going to spend 295 dollars to get that so yeah that was pretty discouraging but that's not going to stop us we are going to get a solution right now when adding a video to OBS as a media source, it's always a good idea to check off use hardware decoding when available. That basically means that if the format or the codec is right, the video will be played by your graphics card and not your CPU, your central processing unit. So you can check that off. Now, unfortunately, my computer uses an RTX 2070. It's NVIDIA, right? GeForce. If I go to the website that highlights the video formats that can be processed by my GPU, none of the formats, none of the codecs that DaVinci Resolve creates are within this graph, unfortunately. So during my testing, I'm not going to pay much attention to the processor at my GPU as to whether or not the processor is being taxed from one format to the next. I'm not really going to care about that. What I'm going to focus on is the CPU and the frames dropped during the playing of the video. And that's it. I'm not going to worry about the GPU in, in my testing. After executing my testing, I found a codec that provides Alpha Channel, but it does not work on OBS. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, format will be QuickTime or MOV, and the codec is called DNXHR. And as you can see right here, it does support Alpha Channel. But unfortunately, when you play it in OBS, the background is not transparent, and the graphic gets all messed up a little bit too. So we're not going to worry about DNXHR because it sucks. <laughs> now, the other one that's also kind of funky is Grass Valley. It does provide transparency, but the, you'll notice that it kind of has this little haze in the transparency where you can see the background coming through, but it's got this weird, subtle, almost like a low contrasty kind of semi-transparency, and it's, it's not good. It doesn't work. So I'm also going to write off Grass Valley as well based on my analysis. If you know how to make that background more transparent instead of having that slight haze, please let us know in comments. We'd love to know. I would love to know. Now we're down to one more codec that we can use, and that codec is called GoPro Cineform. Select that and make sure that the type is selected as RGB 16-bit. When you do that, you'll see the export alpha parameter pop up. Check that off, 
and the alpha mode you're want, you're going to want to keep it as straight and it really doesn't have an impact on how your your CPU is being taxed while it's playing this is more of a decision on how the edge of the graphic is created in relation to where it stops and meets the transparency if you select pre-multiplied that edge may be a little bit funky so always keep it as straight and now we have to decide what quality setting is best for your CPU. So I'm gonna give you two tests, one with a video playing using the best quality and one showing the least quality. So I'm gonna show you how my CPU is being taxed with both those methods. What you see here is the results of my testing. What I did was looped a transitional animation. It was four seconds long. We looped it over and over again for 30 seconds. And here is the results of the statistics. The first thing that sticks out is the CPU usage. The least quality version is only 11% and the highest quality is 20%. That's a 50% reduction. That's not too shabby. There were frames dropped in the best quality. We have four dropped. So I don't know if that would have much of an impact for an animation that's only four seconds long. But if you're creating overlays and they're playing over and over again on your screen for a length of time, that dropped frame amount could certainly pile up real quick. So that is something to think about. The memory usage is also less for the least quality. Let's take a look and see the quality of the actual video. If we set it to least quality, will it look any different than best quality? Let's take a look right now and see what happens. Oh my God, there is no visual difference between best quality and least quality. This is incredible. It looks like least quality is the winner by far. Okay, what are the settings that you should use when creating a video with Alpha Channel with DaVinci Resolve? First thing is select individual clips every time. Format is QuickTime. Codec should be GoPro Cineform. Type RGB 16. When you do that, Export Alpha will reveal itself. Check that off. Of course, select your resolution in this drop down here. Alpha mode should be straight. Quality should be least. And the pixel aspect ratio should always be square. If you check off Cinescope, it's gonna squash the video and make it look weird, so you don't want that. And data level should be full. Now that we've figured out the best export settings, now it gets good because I'm gonna show you how I actually made that animation. And if you go onto YouTube and you search how to do this, most people will tell you while using DaVinci to use the fusion aspect of the program. Now I gotta tell you, fusion uses nodes and it's really hard to wrap your head around the passage of time when using nodes because there's no timeline. We are not going to approach how to do it that way. We're gonna use the regular editor, which makes the entire process so much easier. I'm gonna explain how to tween motion and put it all together real easy and it's super fun i can't wait to show you i will see you over there best wishes stay strong and keep fighting yeah stay strong and keep fighting